This is a tomb of an ancient leader buried in the ruins of Palenque, here in southeastern Mexico. According to some scholars, this area and the northern part of Guatemala were the cradle of the great Maya culture. Who was this man, and why was he buried in this temple? In this silent, sun-swept land, ages ago, a sensitive, cultured people lived out their days. Here they worshipped, built these great structures, prospered, loved, fought civil wars, and disappeared as mysteriously as they came. What is the answer to this great riddle, this enigma of the past? The ancestors of these Mayans built an impressive civilization even before the time of Christ. Some scholars feel that the ancient inhabitants of Central America developed a culture equal to that of the great cultures of the Old World. As we try to visualize the people who lived in Central and South America when these cultures were in full flower over 1,000 years ago, we are intrigued by the comparison with their descendants, the unpretentious and friendly people who still make their homes here. The Aztec culture headed by the great chief Montezuma, was the remnant of a once glorious civilization which foreshadowed it by thousands of years. Who were these ancient people who preceded Montezuma? Their origins and what subsequently happened to them are fascinating questions to scholars and laymen alike. Beautiful modern Mexico City is built upon the ruins of several of these earlier cultures. Research has shown that these people were deeply religious, and among many of the cultures, one of the most persistent beliefs was one concerning the great sky and life god called Quetzalcoatl. Although the god Quetzalcoatl is given various names, the illusion is much the same. A fair, bearded person with blue eyes and wearing a light robe. He counseled the people, taught them, and left with the promise that he would someday return. Quetzalcoatl means feathered serpent, and this symbol is seen in ruins all over Mexico and Central America. It is believed that the feathered serpent is a degenerate symbol created by later peoples to perpetuate the memory of this great deity who left as mysteriously as he came. When Columbus landed in the New World, Many natives thought that he was this great white god who had returned. The people of this land believed very firmly that I, Cristobal Colon, with these ships and crew came from the sky. And in such opinion they received me at every place where I landed. And to this day many of them are of the opinion that I came from heaven. And others went running from house to house with loud cries of, Come, come to see the people from heaven. The Spanish conquistadores under Cortes experienced the same type of welcome from the great Montezuma and his people after they landed in Mexico. The crafty Cortes, taking advantage of the legend, told the chiefs he was indeed sent by Quetzalcoatl, and their belief in the great white god was so strong 
It is recorded that with this joyful news, they wept for a long space of time and could make no reply. Cortes wrote back to Spain, describing large cities of 50,000 inhabitants or more. He mentioned towers of heavy construction. He described aqueducts and water systems of great size and efficiency. Just outside of Mexico City, Teotihuacan exemplifies the high degree of civilization attained by these pre-Aztec ancient peoples. The architecture, the design, the massiveness of these structures even rival the ancient pyramids of Egypt. Mitla in central Mexico exhibits the exquisite workmanship of these ancient artisans who were highly skilled in the art of masonry and in the use of cement. North and east are the pyramids of Tikal and Guatemala, almost hidden in the lush jungle. This complex served a vast population dating back to 600 years before Christ. In this tropical setting was a religious center serving thousands. Copan, Honduras, is thought to have been a great seat of learning. All of these great cities stretching from Mexico on the north, down through the Yucatan Peninsula, and here at Copan, give mute evidence of the extremely high culture that existed here centuries before Columbus. Francisco Pizarro, a later explorer, made conquest in South America and was amazed to find millions of people scattered over this land from Ecuador to Chile. He discovered complex irrigation systems, including canals and reservoirs still in use today. The coastal plains thus watered by mountain streams produced many staple products, including cotton of such unique content that botanists concluded to be a hybrid combination of the old and new worlds and was most likely brought to the Americas by ship or raft. The Paracas culture in Peru, dating from 500 BC to 300 AD, produced some of the finest fabric in the world. Dyes used in these fabrics still retain their brightness even after 2,000 years, attesting to their superb quality. The craftsmanship in New World pottery making was equal to the finest in the Old World. Some resembled the ceramics of Asia. Here in Cusco, Peru, an ancient capital built high in the Andes, Pizarro found this city containing massive walls built centuries before. These enormous, beautifully cut and fitted stones were assembled without the aid of mortar. In fact, they are so perfectly fitted and laid that you cannot force a knife blade into their joints. Thor Hardal mentioned seeing stones fitted like these in the old world. Some of these gigantic stones weigh more than 200 ton. Placing them atop one another was a remarkable engineering feat in itself. Machu Picchu, hauntingly beautiful, was believed to be a fortress complex built to protect Cusco from invasion.
It is well known that the ancients on the American continent were exceptional goldsmiths. Pizarro recorded that it took 60 Incan goldsmiths working night and day for one month to reduce all of the stolen artifacts down to bullion for transportation to Spain. Gold was so common, in fact, that some gold objects were painted other colors to break the monotony. Gold alloy was formed into breastplates and even flat, thin plates have been found much like the aluminum foil in use today. The ancients also worked with copper, silver, and some bronze. These ancient inhabitants were gifted in the art of medicine to an astonishing degree. They were familiar with the use of narcotics, treated abnormal pregnancies, and even performed successful skull operations. But these ancients displayed some of their greatest skills in their engineering and road building feats. Crisscrossing the land were excellent highways connecting all important points. They understood grading, tunneling, and the building of suspension bridges, all utilized in this interesting highway system which runs from Quito in Ecuador to Chile, a distance of more than 3,000 miles. Similar ancient highways are also found in Mexico, such as this one at Caba. The pre-Columbian people of Central and South America were also accomplished musicians with a musical scale similar to that found in the Mediterranean area. The panpipes of the New World are almost identical to those of the Old World. They were also gifted astronomers. And over a thousand years before the old world had today's calendar, new world mathematicians and researchers were using a more accurate system. Old world influence in architecture is noted in this restored Peruvian ruin. At these ruins near Lima, Peru, many interesting discoveries have been made. such as this possible baptismal font. There is much evidence of a highly organized priesthood in their religious practices. This and other findings indicate that religion was the very center of their lives. These early Americans understood the creation of the world, the great flood, the closed ark, the building of the high tower, and the confusion of the languages, much the same as they are found in the Old Testament. Scholars obtained this knowledge from the works of a royal Indian prince, Istalil Xochitl, who was taught the Spanish language by padres who followed the conquistadores. One of these Spanish scholars, named Sahagun, translated the ancient traditions of life after death, fasting and baptism, all basic Christian doctrines. Most scholars today believe that the American Indian is a mixture of many races and blood types. Recent studies and discoveries also link the Americas with Mediterranean cultures. Similarities between the cultures of the Old and the New World provide us with some clues as to their origin. Stone boxes, for example, have been found both in the Old World as well as the New. These boxes often contain gold, jewelry, tools, or other valuables. Compare this box discovered in Mexico with the one found in Persepolis, Iran. The Persepolis box contained two thin metal plates, one of gold and the other of silver, upon which was engraved the record of King Darius. Several hundred different inscriptions engraved on gold, silver, and copper plates have been discovered in the old world. And then in the year 1823, a stone box, much like those you have seen in Latin America, was unearthed in the side of a hill near Palmyra, New York. The stone box was found to contain ancient gold plates, 
with strange engravings upon them, much like those found in Iran. This record, when translated, told of three groups of people migrating here by ships from the old world. The record was found to be God's dealings with some of the early inhabitants of the American continent and was destined to change the course of history. It describes the rise and fall of these two glorious civilizations that prospered under the hands of the Lord when they kept his commandments and were destroyed when they did not. As we study the stone box at the temple of Kukul Khan, another name for Quetzalcoatl, we see a box very similar to the one Joseph Smith described. Speaking of the lid of the box which he found in New York, Joseph Smith said, This stone was thick and rounding in the middle on the upper side and thinner towards the edges so that the middle part of it was visible above the ground, but the edge all around was covered with earth. At the time of Joseph Smith, no stone boxes were known to scholars in either the old or the new world. Eleven reputable men beside Joseph Smith were privileged to see and handle the gold record. Eight of them signed the following statement. Be it known unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, unto whom this work shall come, that Joseph Smith, Jr., the translator of this work, has shown unto us the place of which hath been spoken which hath the appearance of gold, and as many of the leaves as the said smith had translated, we did handle with our hands, and we also saw the engravings thereon, all the which had the appearance of ancient work, and of curious workmanship. And of this we bear record with words of soberness, that the said smith has shown unto us, for we have seen and hefted, and we know of a surety that the said smith has got the plates of which we have spoken, and we give our names unto the world, to witness unto the world that which we have seen, and we lie not, God bearing witness of it. Evidence indicates that many of these beautiful temples and buildings were abandoned and allowed to decay. Why did these great civilizations die out? Why did the people leave? The Book of Mormon gives us some clues. For running throughout the Book of Mormon narrative is the story of two groups of people, one light-skinned and the other darker. We see possible evidence of this in the murals at Bonampak, Mexico, as well as on the murals at Chichen Itza. And legends still exist among these Indians as to a dark and a light people who lived here anciently. The Book of Mormon also speaks of continual warfare between these two groups. The actuality of this is borne out by the numerous fortifications and weapons found in Mexico, Central and South America metal weapons, many of which are similar to those used in the old world. Carved centuries ago in this mountain here in Paracas, Peru, this representation is still called the Tree of Life. One of the most unforgettable stories in the Book of Mormon is the one called the Tree of Life, given by a man named Lehi. In Izapa, Mexico, is one of the most detailed Tree of Life carvings to be found anywhere. One modern archaeologist who has made a thorough study of this stela has recorded 110 similarities between this sculpture and the story found in the Book of Mormon. Perhaps the most beautiful and memorable segment of the Book of Mormon is the portion that tells the story of the visit of Jesus Christ. He taught the people, blessed the children, and upon leaving promised to return someday. So great was the impact of Christ's visit to this continent that his story was repeated and handed down by word of mouth for centuries. Many believe that the legendary Quetzalcoatl was, in fact, Jesus Christ. Is it any wonder then that the natives bowed down and worshiped Columbus, Cortez, and Pizarro upon their arrival here, each time thinking Quetzalcoatl had returned? And so we come full circle to the question of the bearded white god, the most widely held legend in this part of the world. The stories of the bearded white god and these great civilizations of the past are no longer a complete mystery. 
we have the legends of Istalil Xochitl and the well-documented stories and records of the Spanish Chronicles. And we have the Book of Mormon, which contains the most lengthy and detailed history and emerges as one of the truly valuable and important records to date. I have visited Central and South America many times and marvel at the tremendous civilizations which once existed here. I have also studied the Book of Mormon carefully for many years. As I compare these ruins with the events recorded in this book, I have found nothing to discourage me in my convictions as to the truth of this record. And yet I have found hundreds of examples substantiating the things that are written here. It is not only a record of an advanced civilization, but also provides us with some profound guidelines for living, which are as practical today as when written centuries ago. In this book, you will find reassuring answers to questions such as, is there a God? Does man live after death? What is the purpose of man's existence? Why must man suffer? These evidences of great civilizations lead us to some answers with still much to be learned. But both the histories of the peoples described in the Book of Mormon and the remains of ancient cultures found in North, Central, and South America help us appreciate how truly advanced some pre-Columbian cultures were in this hemisphere. This Book of Mormon is true. It's a companion volume to the Holy Bible and the most electrifying and most important record of our time. I testify to you that it is true. And I don't expect you to take my word for it. I'd like to read to you the words of Moroni and urge you to accept his challenge that he has given to you as recorded in his writing. And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that you would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if ye shall ask with sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, ye may know the truth of all things.